Fallout 4 is a game rated M by the ESRB. Good, we're all here. I think it's time we begin. Sir, excuse me, but what exactly is he doing here? I will address that issue. But there are other subjects that require our attention first. The level of unrest in the Commonwealth continues to rise, as we're all aware. Your report. All Institute facilities remain completely secure, with the exception of one notable breach. Otherwise, internally, things are as tight as they've ever been. Dr. Ao has been keeping an eye on things topside. Yes, uh... Watchers show no additional threats beyond those previously identified. We're still monitoring the increased activity around Ford Independence, but there are no immediate signs we should be concerned. Boston International Airport remains occupied, with Brotherhood presence noted at several other points throughout the Commonwealth. Intelligence suggests that this railroad continues to operate and is becoming more ambitious. SRB agents are monitoring all known situations, sir. Very good, thank you. It's clear that our safety needs to be the primary concern going forward. To that end, where are we on Phase 3? Excuse me, but sir... Are you sure this is, well, the proper time to be discussing that? Considering, I mean, given all parties present? Ah yes, that's true. Have you heard anything about Phase 3? What's Phase 3? It's very important to us. Power is, as I'm sure you've seen above ground, a very valuable commodity. I'm not talking about some abstract concept of control. I mean real, tangible power. The kind that keeps the lights on. With every advance the Institute makes, our need for raw power increases. Many compromises and sacrifices have been made over the years to allow progress to continue. What kind of compromises? We have at times had to rely on drawing power from above ground installations. It risks personnel and equipment, but no longer. Phase three is simply the activation of a nuclear reactor that can provide enough power to the Institute now and forever. It will ensure not just our survival, but our prosperity. Can you tell me more about this reactor? Certainly. It was originally built for the Commonwealth Institute of Technology before the war, but was only for testing. Over the years, we've advanced the technology, made a great many improvements, and are finally nearly ready to activate it. The reactor is close to ready, but recent tests have determined we have a few tasks ahead of us. Thus, we come to Phase 3, and to how you will help. Sir? Yes, Dr. Ayo. Previously, we would rely on Kellogg for above-ground operations, yes? Well, he is gone. While I'm not overly fond of putting my own father in harm's way, he has proven more than capable of handling himself. Uh, y yes but... This is not a matter for debate. Now, there is one more subject that requires discussion. I don't know that this is the time. Dr. Holdren, it is time. Please. As I'm sure several of you are already aware, I have been under Dr. Volkert's care for some time. I'm sorry, this is difficult for me. Our best efforts have failed. Every experimental treatment we could devise has been unsuccessful. I'm... I'm sorry to say I am dying. No! You can't please, be serious! Everyone, please, I am sorry. This is not how I wanted to tell you, but we're running out of time. You're dying? I'm afraid so. A very aggressive form of cancer. Believe me when I say we've done everything we can. We can talk more later. Right now, the future of the Institute is at stake. The Institute cannot survive without leadership. The Directorate must continue to govern with the best interest of all in mind. To that end, I am naming my father as my successor. Oh, boy. You can't be serious! Really? How can you possibly justify this? He isn't one of us. He isn't even a scientist. Ignoring your borderline, insubordinate tone, I will simply say this. The Institute has enough scientists 
What it needs is a leader. I believe my father has already proven himself more than capable in that regard. This will conclude this meeting. Thank you. The latest synth generation is wow. just amazing. Those guys in robotics are working miracles. It's my responsibility to make sure this place runs smoothly. Holy crap. That was, um... That was a meeting, to say the least. Uh, by the way, hello everyone, and welcome back to more Stephen Plays Fallout 4. I have a lot of things to say myself, but before I do... I think maybe we should continue talking to uh, Father. What the Institute's founders would think of our accomplishments. I had no idea. I know this is... Well, it's a lot to take in at once. I'm sorry, Father. I hope it wasn't too presumptuous of me to put you in charge without even asking first. What would it mean to be in charge? Most divisions of the Institute are fairly autonomous, perfectly capable of functioning without intervention. Where those divisions interact, however, problems can arise. You'd lead the Directorate in setting policy, resolving disputes, and the like. There's no question that some of the Directorate, and the Institute at large, will need reassurances about your appointment. That's why I'd like you to take charge of this latest operation. Dr. Fillmore can fill you in on the details. There are hard decisions ahead, for all of us, but for you especially. I know that you'll do the right thing. Oh my god. Just barely, but we did level up. Yikes. And as I said before, uh, well, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, you'll notice that, um, we've started mass- mass fusion. Reach level 79, and also X688 is available to be our companion, which is very important. But before I get started on all of the fun things that await us today, I wanted to address a few things, because I think it's important. And I'm going to frame this so it's... So you get this nice background behind me that keeps moving. Um, in the comments of last episode, there was a vocal minority who was a little upset with the way things have been going the last few episodes in terms of Grit's character. Um, people saw Grit as, I guess, a, a good guy, in big air quotes, and uh, didn't like the fact that he had, I guess, strayed from being good. And I wanted to address that. I, I talked a bit about it in the comments, but I wanted to address it on video because I think it's important. Um, just to, for you to kind of get into my head about how I see Grit and how I try to play Grit, and also the, the different things that I'm thinking of whenever I'm, you know, going through these episodes. Um, so Grit is, I, I'd say for the most part, he he runs the good gamut. I wouldn't consider him necessarily good, but I would consider him extremely selfish, maybe? Grit worries about the things that are important to Grit. Um, and there are a few key things that are important to Grit. The big key thing was finding his son, which he's done that. Next, the most important thing to Grit, which I thought was probably pretty obvious, is companions. That is what Grit loves more than anything, probably next to rib cages. Grit loves people. He loves companions. He's charismatic, and he uses that to his advantage in every situation that he you know, can. Um, but he has changed the way that he behaves for basically every single companion that he's come across. If the person is a chem user, then he starts using chems. If the person really likes this or that, then he starts doing this or that. Doesn't like lockpicking? Well, screw you, Strong, but I will put away the lockpicks. Like, Grit Jones loves people. Also loves, like actually loves people, has fallen in love with all sorts of people. Grit Jones is a polyamorous character who has got, you know, his his own group of of people back at Sanctuary who he loves dearly and who love him dearly. The reason I'm taking the time to say all this is because I think it's important to differentiate what you think Grit Jones is trying to do and what Gr what Grit Jones is actually doing, um, because Grit Jones is mostly interested in companions and. Um, 
I mean, when it comes right down to it, it, that's what he's trying to to do. That's what he's trying to save. Those are the people that he cares about because he lost everything he had. He lost his wife. And up until recently, he lost his kid. So the companions are all he really has. These are his friends and his lovers and the only people he cares about in the entire world. That's why he warned everyone. That is why this is also important because he wants these people around. That's why whenever, you know, I read comments and they're like, you should have picked a faction by now and this wouldn't have been so weird. Well, it's gotta be weird because Grit Jones would have made it weird. Grit Jones loves people and he knows that if he does anything, he is going to lose these people in his life. And these people are his life. Also, he loves rib cages. Hopefully I explained all of that pretty well. The, the final thing that I'll say, if you didn't see the comment that I had written in the previous episode, is just that I have a plan. <laughs> and it's so hard not to scream that from the top of a mountain whenever I see comments. Uh, but I really do. I really do. Um... It's just important to, to remember that. When the balls did you get in this room? You scary skeleton man. Uh, oh, and one final thing, not to be too meta, but by staying neutral, you do get to do more quests. And I am trying to do the quests. So keep that in mind. Okay, are we, are we good? I think we're good. Hopefully that made sense. And I hate that I had to even, you know, explain that. But people keep seeing Grit as like this this good guy, and he's like strayed from the path. And I just don't see it like that. Um, Grit Grit Jones has always been focused on on Grit Jones. Uh, he is he has always been focused on his needs and his wants. So to see other people be like, oh, you know, Grit Jones is he's bad now. He's not bad. What? He's just looking out for the people that he loves and his you know his friends, his companions. All right. Um. So at this point, I'm not really sure. What is this? T oh, I know what it's taking me to. It's taking me to you, Allie Fillmore. And here's here's the deal. We're not doing this quest because this quest is a point of no return, and I am not yet ready to make that point of no return. Once again, on top of the mountain, I have a plan. But what we do need to do is we need to find um, X688. Our demand jumped up and to be honest, I don't know where he is, but it's vitally important that we find him because uh, now that we have him available as a companion, and the, really the game throws you a bone here because this is like the only point, because if you proceed with the Institute, you start pissing people off. This is the only point where you actually have a chance to have all of the companions um, you know, with you and under, I hate to say under your control, but under your control. So I need to figure out where X688 lives, and I need to have a talk with him. Of course it makes sense that he'd be hanging out at the Institute SRB, the Synth Retention Bureau, because that's what he does. He retains synths. It was synths. an honor to fight at your side. What's well, going to be an honor again, pal? Hi. Ready for the next mission, sir? Oh yeah. Have you got all the gear you need? A full loadout, as usual. Let's move out. Right behind you, sir. Weird cutscene with with no dialogue. All right, are you ready? Because we're going to do it. We're going to explore. We are going to continue doing some exploration and, and uh, continue to move into parts of the map that we haven't seen. And the reason we're doing that is because we are after X688's perk. You have to understand, depending on the choices that are made very soon, we lose out on the ability to get the perk. I know that some people are focused on Grit's character, but you also have to remember that we are playing a game. A game that I'm trying to, you know, do a lot of stuff in. With that in mind, um, the only way we're going to be able to get this perk is if we take him, you know, adventuring and do some various things now. So that is the plan. When we look at our data, we've got mass fusion, which uh, causes some problems. You might be saying, well, go do Liberty Reprimed. Guess what? And this is fun. There is a bug uh, where with you... If you take someone other than Paladin Dance um, to continue on Liberty Reprimed, Paladin Dance can have his affinity reset to zero. So that's fun. Also, look up failed. What is that? Was it trying to pull the information and it couldn't pull the information? Or is it just always say look up failed? Because that seems like a bug. <laughs> The game, the closer you get to the end of the game, 
the more it crashes. So we've got some various things that we can do, certainly. Um, but what I'm most interested in doing is actually just exploring uh, a little bit with X688, because we really haven't had a chance to hang out with him a whole lot, which sort of sucks. So, if we if we uh, go to the map and we just kind of zoom out and look, there are still a few places that we've never actually visited, and there's still some sections of the map that we haven't spent a lot of time in. One of those places um, is up here, the Irish Pride Industry Shipyard. So just because I've never, ever been there before, we're going to head over to the Poseidon Energy Turbine and start walking east. Coming back into focus. There we go. Now, X66 seems like one bad dude, so we shouldn't have too much of a problem with whatever we uh, may come across. Seems good to me. All right. Got the stork, which is not my best weapon, but it's what I'm equipping for this particular job. Fortunately, uh, most of you seem to really enjoy the exploration episodes, which is good because we're going to be doing um, quite a quite a little bit of that in the next few episodes just to work on X6's perk. Uh, it's going to be vital that we do that because we will otherwise miss out on the, um, you know, or at least potentially miss out on the ability to do so. Irish Pride Industries Shipyard. Where'd you go? Are you still here? You're still here. Alright, so I have no idea what's inside. I don't even know why this was marked on my map, to be honest. It's just an area that was marked on my map, and I thought it was a little peculiar. So we're gonna go in and take a look. There's definitely gonna be something... ...in here. I'm guessing... ...ghouls. Probably ghouls. Don't see signs of life yet. Doesn't mean they're not in here, it just means I don't see them. There's, uh, and there's still a few other look. I heard something. There's still a few other locations, and I'm actually really interested in finding... Good place to stage an ambush. ...in, uh, finding in... Far Harbor. Um, I, in fact, I recall, one, like, an aquarium or something, actually, that we totally skipped out on. Just because we had basically finished all the stuff we needed to do in Far Harbor, and I had said, well, at some point, we'll come back and, and check out more. And, um... That's probably going to be something that we do pretty soon, because, um, we need to continue to flesh out the map and find places... ...find places that we haven't been yet. I'm not sure if it's ghouls or not. Could be ghouls. Kind of sounds like rad roaches. I'm not sure, but regardless, this door's got to be unlocked. So, whatever we're opening the door to is going to come right at us here in a second. Hopefully it won't be too... ...bad. Yes. Mirelurks! That is not what I expected at all. Really? Mirelurks? Alright, 86. We're going in. Gotta stay frosty. It's my line. Kill you. <laughs> Zero percent chance to hit! God, they make a terrible noise. There's something over there. It could be a mama, it could be more babies. Mirelurks, really. I was like, ghouls, maybe rad roaches. And it's like, oh, what? No, but you... You must have meant crabs. You got crabs. Alright, let's take this. Didn't mean to take the purified water, but whatever. Is there something in here? No. What is that? What? I can't get this plunger out of the toilet. What is the other thing in there? Oh, I think it's a Mirelurk egg. Okay. I was like, what the heck is that? Seemed a little strange. Also, did I hear someone come over the loudspeaker and say, Monkey see, monkey do? So I'm pretty sure that's what I heard. Oh, it's a ship. Oh. Well, that makes a little more sense. It just It's a shipyard, which is, I guess, why I'm seeing Mirelurks. Let's just be very careful. Maybe, uh... Maybe switch over to Fangel's Guardian. There's a full-size... No, that's a baby. Is that a baby? It's a baby. Where are they? Let's do this. Oh my god, are they just little babies? 
<laughs> big man killed the little baby. Seriously, is that all these are? Is the shipyard just- oh my god, I missed a 95% chance. Try that again, Grit. Better job. Three experience. I'm sure I'll get to the next level in no time. Ow. Ow. Little jerks. Hit the other one. Boom. 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 Stupid little things. Okay, uh, reload. Are there more in here? Legendary Mirelurk Kill Claw. Okay, we'll let it get up here so I don't have to go down there. It'll find its way, I'm sure. Here, you- you- you stand at the exit. That way you'll be the one that has to deal with whenever it comes by. I'm gonna take, uh, this ammo. To find its way- it? Oh, it's coming. Oh, and it's got a friend, a Mirelurk Hunter behind it. Uh, go for the head. Boom! It's mutated. But otherwise, still alive. Now it's dead. Alright, so that threat is eliminated, and it's a legendary, so we have a chance of getting something cool. Do some damage to the Mirelurk Hunter. It's trying to crawl over this thing and not having a lot of luck. Uh, let's see, where should I shoot you? Torso. Uh, head. Let's go for the head. Wow, I shot the ground. Shot the ground in front of you. Because Vats is reliable. Alright, I'll check that legendary here in a second. So, this might just be... You know, a cool location, trademark. Um, for random discovery. Could be tied to a quest, I don't know, but it was strangely marked on my map, and I'm not really sure why. I believe it's been there for a long time. But I don't- <laughs> I have no idea why it's- why it was there in the first place. What you got? Mighty Lever Action Rifle, 25% more damage. Which is pretty cool, it just does more damage. Um... We used the Lever Action Rifle for- for quite some time. Uh, when we were in Far Harbor. Traveling around with Long- Longfellow, so that was fun. Uh, let's see... Seriously, there's a loudspeaker that's playing just really weird messages. And I'm a little... Confused. Is this the door we... This is not the door we came out of. I'll check that in a minute. Let me go up. Strange. There's holes in the ceiling. Which... You know, I, I'll admit, is a little unsettling. When Rory yells at you, it's because Rory loves you. What? What is this place? Is it some sort of, like... That- that line makes me think that there's, like, a sea lion. And that the sea lion... It was an exhibit for kids or something. I don't know. Hidden is still moving quite a bit. I'm not... I'm not trusting... Um, uh, my- Ooh! Ribcage. <laughs> Uh, Psycho. <laughs> which... Which is probably a more accurate description... <laughs> ...of Crit Jones... ...um... ...than, uh, than Good Guy. There's definitely... Is this where I was? This is where I was. Okay, so I walked in here... ...but I could have also went back this way. Okay, you are creepily just standing there. A little scary, dude. Um, as far as I can tell, it's time to get on the boat. Um, or go down into that hellish landscape, but if there's nothing that I can see from up here that, you know, it looks like it's gonna help me, then I don't see any reason to board the- or to get under there. Um, so we're gonna board the boat. God. Sorry, I thought I heard something, and I'm very skittish right now for some reason. I did hear something. Oh, it's a baby. Hi, baby. To it. <laughs> that all you got? This in this entire location is super strange. I can't explain the voice that continues to come over the loudspeaker and why it acts so funky. But thank God there's some lore to possibly explain this very strange location. 
Nothing in the desk. Oh, this is Rory! Oh my god! Claws are for hugging, not pinching. Peace joint. Oh my god, he's talking to the Mirelurks. Holy crap, this psycho was friends with the Mirelurks. Well, let's see what he learned. It's amazing how far the colony has come since the first orphan hatchlings. I was so worried the Mirelurks wouldn't survive, but they've done the opposite. They've thrived. I like to think it's because of my positive energy and love. They're always so hungry, my little murkies. I have to remember to throw their food away from myself. They almost pinched me again the other day. They don't know what they're doing, the poor things. I've decided to keep my trunk of valuables in the Mirelurk nest under the ship for safekeeping, but I have to be more careful. Some bad people snuck in the other day despite my warnings, and my murkies did something dreadful. I'm glad none of my pets got hurt, but it was frightening to see them kill so casually. Must work more on their training. Only positive messages for my Mirelurks. Turn announcements on, keep turn announcements off. I'm going to turn them off. So that turns off... Part of me was wondering if, like, all of a sudden there'd be, like, this crazy uprising of Mirelurks because I turned off the messages. But I guess not. Alternatively, I kind of wonder if, if you come in here and you turn them off initially, if maybe they don't come out or don't attack or something. Maybe they just really hated the loudspeaker? I have no idea. Either way, we know that there's a, very unfortunately, a chest of valuables down below. So, guess where we're going? God. And it's playing the, the fun music as I get down here. We already know that they're in there. Time to wake up! God, are there more? There's gotta be more, right? Ah, oh, jeez, I'm not happy about this! What do you have on you? A viable blood sample. Ah, uh, jeez. That's a lot of babies. Let's say no to those. Think I woke some up. Well, when I say some, I mean literally one. Where the crap? Is this... stinking... Oh god. Hi, Mirelurk Killclaw. How's it going? It's fine. Thank you for asking, Grid Jones. Did another one get up? Oh, one just hatched next to me. Son of a... Right here. Right here. X6, get it! <coughs> oh god! There's another one somewhere, but I think he's on the other side of the boat. Where is this trunk? Wait, where is the... Oh, there it is. Please it fell... Go. It briefly fell through the earth. Welcome to a Bethesda game. Here it is. Nothing of interest, but there are some... Oh! Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's a part of the landscape. Oh, it's Rory. Irish pride, key, bottle cap. Iguana bits. What did this guy look like? Curious. I'm gonna put you up on this. Can I get you up on this thing? I mean, y you meant well. You meant well, but, uh... It looks like, ultimately, what you thought were your friends, uh, were not your friends. Hitting vats, I'm not seeing anything. A little scared to just keep... moving forward. But it's probably fine. Alright, I'm safe. I was kind of scared there for a minute. I was like, oh, yep, this is not good. I'm going to get attacked, but I think we're safe. This is just a very, you know, another, another blip across the extremely strange and sometimes fascinating landscape of Fallout 4. Let's walk back outside. Hmm. Where... are we? Just in the back of the building? Alright, seems good. Um, my first course of action since we're, you know, basically in explore mode is to try and find things that we haven't seen, so... Uh, dead ahead it looks like there is a tower. 
that we haven't explored yet. So that is my... That is my next stop. And we'll see what that is. It's probably just a radio tower that you activate. Very rarely see these wild. Almost always a part of caravans. So we haven't activated this, but the... The other things... Seem activated. What is this? Are there people living here? Well, there were. I turned that off. You're long, long dead. Turn this one off, too. Turn this on so I can see. Alright, sometimes in the past when we've activated these relay towers, I don't want to say bad things have happened, but, you know, things that I would not qualify as great have happened. So let's extend this. And then get ready for a possible fight. No? I guess we're good. Default radio signal signal found. Default? What does that mean? I'm not, I don't seem to be picking anything up and I'm standing right next to it. Are there any locations around me that I haven't explored? I don't think so. I'm gonna walk just a little bit to see if... ...this radio signal does anything? I can... Oh god. I can kind of hear something in the distance. In the rate. Oh god! Jesus! I was like, well, I don't see anything here. Yeah, I can hear the radio faintly. Well on the way to making new friends and being the envy of your neighbors. Hmm. Oh! It's a, it's a Robco, um, kit. Oh, okay. So it's, um, it's a ham radio kit. That's what I'm hearing. All right, well... That's, that's why it says default. Um, doesn't really do me any good, but still kind of interesting. See, this is where we've been before. Hmm. I think this area of the map is one that we've probably filled out pretty well. Let me zoom out and see if there's anything else that... Sticks out to me as largely unexplored. Occasionally, we'll just have straight up things that we haven't seen yet. Waypoint Echo, Edge of the Glowing Sea, uh, Robotics Pioneer Park. Let's see. Liberty Reprimed. Is that where? Okay, so that's where they want us to go for Liberty Reprimed. I'm going to skip out on that for now. Um, but there's other things in the Glowing Sea that could actually be of interest to check out. For instance, there's an abandoned shack. We've already seen the Crater of Adam. I don't know if we would do so well in the Glowing Sea without our armor. That's the only problem. What's this, though? Robotics Pioneer Park. We've never been there. Let's go to the Scrap Palace and walk. Help defend things. Okay, um... Let's not... Oh, God. Oh, mutants! Okay, yeah, mutants. Um... Oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, they're raiders! Okay, well, give me a sec here. Um, see, how difficult are you? Probably not very at all. Can work and get my crit up a little bit. I don't even want to kill you guys. It's just you're in the way of going to see this forest thing. And really interested in seeing this forest. Also, I blew that thing up basically right in front of me. Oh, they got a free, uh, a free crit out of it. Are you the guy I was shooting at? Where'd you go? What well, ain't nothing? Because I feel like it's definitely something. You died. <laughs> that seems like something. Alright, so the mutants are still over there. I feel like they're mostly leaving me alone. Oh, is that the guy? Is that the guy I was... Thank you, mysterious stranger. I sincerely appreciate your help. He got... tangled in some trees. Um, there's also a... Oh, that that's the military outpost that I'm... I'm waiting on, because that's... Oh, that thing's going down. 
All right, well, while that's happening, I'm gonna wander over here and see what this was all about. Oh, God, hi. Scared the piss out of me. It's point blank if I've ever seen it. Who else is here? Protectron, Feragul Stalker, um... You're of no threat to me yet. Wait, what's the... I don't understand. I don't have anything active, do I? Oh, Outpost and Munch. I was like, I don't have anything active. What are you talking about? And they're like, no, you're... You're supposed to be up here helping defend Outpost Simonja. And I'm like, what the crap? I'm not anywhere close to that. But it was on my my map, like, well, get over there. And I'm like, no. No, don't tell me to do that. You're confusing me, game. Oh, there's a lot of things over here that I haven't seen, which is nice. So there's a Protectron, which is of interest. Um, I don't know why that's over there. There's also definitely some... ...enemies. Gotcha. Gotta see what the Protectron's doing, and what exactly it's protecting. There's a Feral Ghoul Roamer just chilling over there. One of these will hit. Boom! Must have hit him at the neck. Okay, let's go in here and see, um... Okay, well, after I kill this. Oh, all the Protectrons aren't active. Also, look at this. How often do you normally see, like, three in one? That almost never happens. Park Protectron Control Center. Um, I'll hack this, but I don't know if I'm gonna activate any of them. Pile, um... How about... Well, it can't be roll, because that's L-N-E. Code? Um, take. Yes. There we go. Uh, let's see. Protectrons on Parade Overview. Now that sounds good. The Protectron on Parade program runs during these hours. Specific instructions will be given for holidays or special events. A backup unit has been provided. It is stored in the maintenance cabin in case of any outages. Please contact Robco. Hmm. Okay, but here's my question. Does it actually work? Saturday, Sunday, 10 to 3. Thursday, Friday, 5 to 7. What time is it in the game? <laughs> 8, 12. Oh, well, there's no dates. That's the problem. There's there's a date, but it doesn't tell you what day of the week it is. I wonder if it's programmed in though. I don't know. Nicely done, sir. Ooh, you like it when I hack terminals. Well, guess what, buddy? I'm gonna be hacking a lot of freaking terminals then. Protect your own control. Choose personality mode. I was really hoping that I could do like you know, the 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 on parade mode. That would be great. Default. Um Sure, I'll just put it on default. Activate units. Is that all of them? They're all up! I don't have any interest in killing them, really. I just think it's cool that they're all... ...awake and moving. No, I'm good. Thanks, so. though. You do you. You're all doing great. Look at them. Oh my god. This is- this is beautiful. All the Protectrons. Look at them all. It's a Protectron parade! Isn't this the- this is just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's so happy and pure. In a world of... <laughs> of evil. Um, alright, so now that that's moving... Let's check out these other... Places. Maybe that's why they wanted these Protectrons to help me. Oh god! Oh god! Did I pacify the the thing? I think I- oh god. Man, what was the- th the utility Protectron was the thing that was like killing me. Really fast. Like, good God! Rip them to shreds. That's my girl. That's my girl. Get him! Get him! You work for Grit Jones. Everything was going so well. Man, I'm surprised at how much damage that little thing did. I was like, I was on the verge of death. 
Aw, oh, you're beautiful. You are a beautiful creature. You're a beautiful cre- you are glowing, so you're giving me some radiation. But you're a beautiful creature. Absolutely beautiful. You're also almost dead. I'm gonna finish the job. Sorry. This is just nothing personal, it's just experience. You have anything on you? Not that I particularly need. Something something so wonderful and pure is over. But to be fair, this one it was the cryo gun. That one nearly freaking killed me. All of a sudden I looked up and I'm like, wait, am I dying? I'm dying. Oh my god, I'm dying. Fancy hairbrush, get out of my life. <laughs> I'm taking you just cause I love my wife. Hmm. I'm assuming that that was uh, just kind of a scripted thing. And it's also a good thing that I activated all those Protectrons. I don't ever do that. So I kind of lucked out. Um, although I pacified it anyway. I don't know if there's anything in this pond or not. Anything up here? Not, not sure what this was supposed to be. Some sort of monument. Um, interesting. Well, there's, uh, there's apparently a factory or something out that way that I have not yet explored. So, uh, that and the relay tower seem like obvious choices. But I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. What do you want to see me explore? And this is gonna be pretty important because I actually need to record the next two episodes. Maybe you've heard of it. But there's a little little thing out in the Atlantic right now called Hurricane Irma, which, uh, at the time of this recording, is the second most powerful hurricane in recorded history. It has wind speeds of 185 miles per hour, and uh, it's still uncertain where it's going, but it seems pretty likely that we will be getting at least part of that storm. It's incredibly likely that we could be losing power for a while, and I'm trying to record ahead just a little bit. Um, so instead of just doing the next episode for Sunday, I'm going to be doing uh, both Sunday and Wednesday's episode. Shouldn't be too bad because I do plan on uh, dedicating them to exploration with X6. That's why I want you guys to tell me where you want me to explore. Is there something particular that you think I should check out? Is there something you've really wanted to see that I haven't done? Um, is there, you know, an on the mark quest somewhere that you're like, oh man, you, you should go do this. Do you want me to, to go back to Far Harbor? God knows there's plenty of stuff uh, stuff to do there. Uh, you tell me, because I'm going to be dedicating the next two episodes to uh, building Affinity with X6, and then also showing him off, because, you know, we've only just now unlocked him. So let me know what you want to see. Um, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Um, this, uh, I, I really hated that I had to, you know, e explain myself, but I, I don't want people to be upset with the series, you know? I think that's the reason that means so much to me, is because I want everyone... You know, I know you can't make everyone happy, but I want everyone to be as reasonably happy as possible. So sometimes I feel like I need to remind them, you know, what I'm feeling and how I'm approaching it. And then also the fact that I do have a plan. Now, with all that being said, as we wrap up this episode, I want to give one more piece of info that is probably going to blow your minds. As of this episode... As of episode 190 of Fallout 4, Fallout 4 is officially, by time, the longest running series on Steven Place. Yes, it's longer than Skyrim. I've been keeping track of it for a while, and I know that Skyrim has 283 episodes, but the episode lengths themselves aren't as long as Fallout. If you're looking strictly based on the amount of time, the amount of hours it takes you to watch the series, Fallout 4, as of this episode, has now surpassed Skyrim. It is the longest series on the channel. I'm just... I, I, I knew that, uh, that Fallout was, was a big game. Um, but it's really proving itself here because uh, we're not done. There is still more to do. And I know that we're getting close, but Fallout 4 has officially surpassed Skyrim in length. Wild, isn't it? Absolutely wild. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for more Stephen Plays, Fallout 4.